Hello, and thank you for joining us for Tiger Talk this month. I'm Jeremy Williams, the superintendent. I'm joined this, this month with Brian Jones, the principal of our secondary programs, and Dan Hoffman, our new assistant principal at the ALC and the Career and Technical Institute. So welcome, and thank you for joining us today. Um, we're going to talk about the ALC and the new location and some exciting things there, but just a few announcements I want to share with everybody first. Um, we did host our open house for the new ALC just the other night. Uh, we had a grand opening with ribbon cutting along um, with the Southwest Service Cooperative, um, hosted, opened up the whole site and got people to come through. Really nice event, well attended by the community and fun to show off that site and just get people through there and, and looking at that. Our new facility is a big upgrade from what we had before. We've got, you know, we laugh a little bit. We've got walls and doors for our classrooms. That's just something we've never had in that program before. So um, it was fun to get the kids in there at the start of the year and get staff all set up. And just nice to be able to show it off to the community, too. So certainly want to thank um, all the board members in the community for your support in that program, getting that up and going. October is National Principals Month, um, so we're excited to honor the exceptional work of our principals this month. I want to say a big thank you to Brian, to Hayden, to Dan, Mary Kay, Peggy, Bennett, Peter, Amanda, Darcy, and Tiffany. I'm going to read them all so I don't miss anybody. Um, we've got a really great team of principals in the district, and i um, excited to be able to work with all of them and just uh, for the work that they do for our whole community. So a big thank you to you guys and everyone on your team. Uh, <clears throat> at Southview Elementary, uh, they're continuing to work on their bar implementation this year. It's a building assets, reducing risks. It's a program, it's really a framework. And, you know, we hear people say, oh, we got that new curriculum. It's not a curriculum. It's not something, something different or something additional. It's just looking at how we do what we already do, but framing a different framework on how we use those programs to support students, looking at individual needs and really focusing on the strengths of each student and thinking about how can we help each student to learn and to grow individually. Um, as they continue this year through their work with that, they're implementing U-Time activities, so it's a, a social emotional learning um, class or uh, session that happens in each of the classes, how they get to know the kids and make those connections, because we know relationships is a key into making that work. I know, Brian, you've used um, BAR for a number of years at the high school. I-Times are what the secondary level uses, uh, part of that program that's a big part of it. Yep, yep. Yeah. So that's where Southview and middle school are starting their focus this year. Uh, also pulling in the entire school community, looking at how we all work together to support the learning of kids and not in isolation, because we know that's how we best meet the needs of all of our kids. So it's been a really good project, um, very well received at our elementary school and our middle school as well. Uh, Southview is also excited. Their Student Athlete Advisory Committee has been, they've partnered up, they've got some dates set throughout the year uh, just to have SMSU athletes greeting our Southview students at the door. So that's a lot of fun. We had the Mustang football team there recently, the women's soccer team has been there recently. They line up by the front door and sometimes into the big tunnel and just a greeting for those second, third, and fourth graders as they come in. It's a lot of excitement. Every once in a while a kid wants to sneak around and not go through the tunnel or get all the high fives, but most of them are pretty excited about that piece. So it's a fun way to greet and I think the SMSU kids enjoy coming in the mornings and doing that as well. <clears throat> Our fifth grade students in middle school, they recently went to the environmental fair um, that took place right here in town at the fairgrounds. Uh, they got to school later that afternoon, excited about their new knowledge coming home. I know my son was a fifth grader. He got to go part of that. It was a lot of fun seeing those kids come there. And just they learned a lot of different things that day. We also recently had homecoming week. That was a highlight at the middle school. They had dress up days, activities that just brought a lot of fun into the buildings at all the levels. I know it round up, round, wrapped up with a big dance at the yep. high school following the games that, that week. And it was a, a good week, fun way to celebrate our schools. Looking ahead, the middle school is looking forward to their first middle school dance of the year that happens on October 24th. Uh, student council is working on themes and decorations. I know the kids are getting excited about that. They're also excited to have Knowledge Bowl and Conservation Crew starting in the near future. Hard to believe, we're already at a spot where our fall activities are wrapping up yep. and we're starting to talk about winter activities. So um, that's happening really quickly, but those are fun things taking place in the middle school this year. Speaking of activities and things wrapping up, a lot of updates this month from our activities department. Um, boys soccer, uh, for the first time in the history of the program, has um, moved on into some section championships. Unfortunately, they didn't make it last night, but they really had a great season. So that was really fun for those kids. They did get the first ever Big South Conference title. And just a really fun season with that group of, that group of kids this year. A uh, lot of growing participation, of course, when you have a great season like that. So looking at some additional things next year as that, as that program continues to grow. Girls soccer wrapped up their season with a 6-8-2 and two record, reaching quarterfinals after a hard-fought hard, hard loss. Um, we had a large senior class this last year, but the team really rebuilt and had a strong season again this year. Marching Band recently concluded their season on a high note. They participated in the Youth and Music Festival in Minneapolis. They placed third in the class uh, AAA and 
11th overall out of 34 bands from all over the area. So that was a fun event for that, for that team uh, to be up there. That season goes really fast, but that is now over. Tennis concluded their season with individual tournaments on October 11th and 12th. They finished the year with an 8 and 11 record. Uh, football is having a great season this year as well. We're still going with the football season. Uh, attendance has been up by over 10% this year. So thank you to people for supporting our football team. Um, we've had really great weather this fall, of course. That helps with that too. But the team performance is always a big draw. And uh, it's been, been fun with the football program this year again as well. Swim team recently placed seventh at the True Team Meet last weekend in Wilmer. Uh, they're gearing up for some section play with the swim team. And uh, with our golf coach, we want to mention that we recently bid farewell to Nancy Blanchard. She had been a girls golf coach for a lot of years, recently tired from the program, so we're searching for a new golf coach. So if anyone's interested in learning more about that opportunity, um, connect with us and we'd love to talk more about that. Finally, our Project Success Program, it's an annual program after school, um, support of students in need of some extra, some extra just work with reading and math specifically for grades K through eight. Um, that happens in grades yeah, K through eight at Parkside, Southview, and the middle school. Uh, that's starting next week on Tuesday, October 22nd, that kicks off. Um, we have a few open spots in there. Um, so if anyone wants to know more about that, Emily Carroll continues to be our coordinator for that program. So a uh, great program that we're excited to get kicked off this year. All right, so let's talk about the ALC a little bit. Dan, you're brand new to the ALC. Um, didn't come from a long ways away, but new to Marshall this year, um, new to our ALC programming and CTI, which is really kind of your focus. Tell us just a little bit about yourself first. Um, well, as you said, I, I actually uh, grew up here in Cottonwood, um, and in the last 25 years, I've actually been teaching at Lakeview and uh, teaching shop classes and uh, also math classes as well. Um, so this has, been a, um, this has been a good year for me to start something new mm -hmm. and in the first year as being the assistant principal for you. Yeah, and with the CTE programming taking place, that's right up your alley. That's the, that's the world yeah. you've lived for a lot of years. So we're really excited to have you on board and, mm -hmm. and getting to come and be part of our program. So you came in at a really exciting time for ALC as well, yes. opening a brand new building and you come in as we're ready to start literally moving boxes and you know, where do we put the boxes? I don't know where the rooms. So um, you've done a really nice job kind of filling mm -hmm. in and, and getting going with that, that brand new program. Um, let's talk a little bit about the ALC. Like, just for our, our viewers that aren't sure, what is the ALC? And either one of you can speak to that. Sure. <clears throat> well, the ALC is um, a, an area learning center. Essentially, we're there to help um, students who are having um, difficulty with regular high school to try to achieve their diploma. Yeah. So, Brian, you're going to have a lot of referrals from Marshall High School that will come there. Can you sure. talk a little bit about, like, what... What type of student might go to the yeah, ALC? Yeah, a lot of times uh, we'll see students maybe who are behind in credits for graduation. That's probably the most common. Uh, we'll see students who maybe have struggled with attendance. Uh, students who just that larger setting creates uh, a lot of uh, stress and anxiety. So we see avoidance behavior uh, or they just haven't performed well and they've, they've gotten behind. And so we need to try something different because doing the same thing just isn't working for that student. And, and so we see that not only uh, here at the Marshall Area Learning Center, uh, not only for students from Marshall High School, but we also draw students from our surrounding communities who, mm -hmm. uh, and, and really uh, and a, the ALC is an opportunity to try to still help students earn their diploma uh, before they get to a point where they just wanna give up and quit uh, or pursue their GED. Uh, and so still trying to help students uh, earn that high school diploma so that they can continue on with uh, opportunities for the future that they are interested in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, Dan, it's the Area Learning Center. A lot of times we'll call it the alternative school, but ours is specifically called the Area Learning Center. Like Brian mentioned, we do get students from all over. Let's talk just a little bit about like what the ALC does. So you said they come to earn a diploma, and I think sometimes the question is, well, what kind of diploma do they get from the ALC? You, know, you mentioned the GED. This isn't yeah. the GED, so maybe you guys right. can speak a little bit to what sure. that looks like. Well, it is an actual Marshall High School diploma is what they'll get uh, when they graduate. Um, we, um, we are on a five-block schedule compared to where the high school is on a four-block schedule. That allows us then to help uh, with that credit recovery for those students that are behind. Mm -hmm. um, also, we offer a lot of other services with like um, um, Greater Minnesota, we have someone on staff up there that will help with students that have the anxiety needs and or need those services. Right. And for a student, Brian, from a different district that might come in, what might the diploma sure. look like for them? 
Yeah, so students who come to us from, uh, from a neighboring district, they have that opportunity to choose where they want to graduate with a Marshall High School diploma or if they want to graduate with a diploma from their, uh, their home, their resident school district. And so then our staff at the ALC works uh, to make sure that we're meeting those graduation requirements that are specific to that, that school district. Um, and so uh, really we try to, it's a very individualized approach uh, and we try to meet those students where they're at. Uh, sometimes people come in and they have this preconceived notion that it's really something much different than what it is. But the way we explain it, our staffs do staff development together. And mm -hmm. it's really just another division, if you will, of Marshall High School. Uh, the diploma, if they want to graduate uh, from Marshall Public Schools, it's a Marshall High School diploma. Uh, much like in the same way, a CTI is just another department yeah. Uh, within the, the high school, they're just they're not located in the same physical space, but uh, the end goal is the same, and that's to help those students earn that high school diploma and be prepared for those next steps uh, of their life, the adult life. Right. We talk a lot about our mission about preparing all students for success, and we stress that all students. So, you know, elementary that looks different because we're talking about what do you need to learn to read or what do you need to learn to read. By the time we're to high school, now we're talking about what is your future going to look like? What do you need to be successful in high school? And we see such a varied varied um, set of needs there too. It just does a lot different than elementary school. So this is some of those key ways that we meet some of those needs because our goal is to get everyone to graduate and get everyone to be ready for whatever their next step is. You know, I think about when all of us went to school, the stress was really on, you're going to a four-year school or you won't be successful. I know I heard that when I was in school and um, I'm sure you guys heard the same thing, but that's not the conversation we have anymore. It's what, you know, and we can go a, a long time to CTI, I'm gonna my soapbox here, but we get excited about what is next for that student and then what skills do we need and maybe the traditional high school just isn't right. So this is one way we can meet those needs. And even for those students who want to go directly into the workforce, mm -hmm. uh, we wanna be able to to say to those employers in our community, uh, they've, this diploma means that they are prepared. They've got, uh, they've got those uh, attendance uh, skills and habits. Uh, they've got some of those soft skills about how to understand how to work with people. Uh, they've got a work ethic and that they are going to be uh, a good employer. And, and to that point with our ALC, we get uh, our students who also can earn that academic credit through work experience. Mm -hmm. And so they're in school, uh, but maybe they have that part-time job and, and some of our students at our ALC are working, you know, they're, they're supporting themselves predominantly or they're needing to contribute to the income of the family. And so right. that work piece for those students uh, is something uh, for many of them that's really important and, and uh, so not only part of their school but also part of why they continue to come to school as well because they can earn academic credit while working that job and trying to our, our staff at the LC does a great job of really trying to meet the needs of each individual uh, student and, and get them to that next step, that next phase. Right, absolutely. And we work with the same academic standards that we work right. with at the high school. Mm -hmm. And we're pretty flexible too because um, with our programs, we've had students that are actually can sign up for high school classes mm -hmm. over at the high school or at the CTI as well. We're very flexible in trying to work with those students to get what they need. Right, and that's part of this move. So that's a good transition mm -hmm. to my next question yes. is, you know, the move, we used to be located, um, the old Schwann's Call Center, or at one time I remember it being the yeah, Shop Coal Building, yeah. way on the other side of town. So for a student to go back and forth from there to the high school, it took a lot of time to get back and forth, yep. and it just wasn't a convenient location for, for anything for our, for our programming. So talk a little bit, Dan, about where we're at now. Well, right now we're currently housed at the old Social Science Building here on campus at SMSU. Yep. Um, we are on the second floor, the Southwest Service Co-op, the ELC is on the first floor. Yeah. And so we're only what, uh, about a seven minute walk yeah. across the, the way over to the high school. So, so it's very really convenient nice. for students. Yes. So, you know, I think about music programming, for example, a very specific course that needs very specific tools and a very specific teacher that we just don't have enough kids at the ALC to right. offer a class like that. But now with it being across the street, almost in the regular passing time, a student can get back and forth to where they need to be yeah. and be in class on time on both sides. So we can partner a lot more that way and provide more opportunities to kids. So, yeah. yeah. More opportunities for electives, but also yeah. then more opportunities for some of those career uh, opportunities because our ALC really focuses on 
the cores and those classes needed for graduation requirements. Right. Yep. Uh, and so we think this can create some opportunities that's for students at our ALC that they maybe haven't had as much of in the past. Right. In my intro, I talked a little bit about the walls and doors and some exciting things. Brian, maybe talk to us a bit, because Dan, you were never in the old site, but Brian, talk a little bit about maybe the history of the ALC and where we've been sure. that make us so excited about where we are now. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I first came to Marshall back in 1999, and I think that was the first year of our alternative school. It actually started on the campus of SMSU, uh, was there for a, a few years, and then uh, that space, we kind of outgrew that space. The so Life Skills Center. Life Skills Center, yep. And so then, it, and I think it was in the IL building mm -hmm. at, the, at the time. And then, uh, then we moved and we went to uh, the old uh, J.C. Penney space mm -hmm. uh, in the Market Street Mall. Uh, and we're there for a number of years. And so just, uh, you were the administrator at that time yep. there in a big open uh, floor plan and space. And we had uh, cubicles mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, or partitions, probably is a better way. And so, uh, you know, uh, one light switch uh, ran the whole school, and so when someone wanted to show uh, a video or something, uh, the whole building kind of went, needed to go yeah. dark. And, and so uh, that presented some challenges, but there are also some advantages to that. And then probably back in uh, uh, 2000, uh, maybe 10 to 2012, uh, is when we moved over to uh, the Maytech location, and we, we wanted to put a focus, in, and that was really our start of a focus on career and technical education within our alternative school. And then we started our welding program and our CNA program and uh, we outgrew that space. That's when we had the opportunity to expand uh, our CTI location. So that still kind of falls under, uh, under Dan's uh, yep. umbrella uh, at, at CTI, its current location. Uh, but then we had this opportunity and, and you know, buildings age and, and the infrastructure, there's needs that need to be done. And, uh, the service co-op uh, wanted to partner and, and really is a nice space. It's been remodeled, uh, really looks good. And for those who yeah. came out to the tour the other day, uh, that was a, a sentiment that I heard repeatedly from folks that uh, they really thought that was a nice space. A lot of SMSU staff came that had been in the building yeah. before and just see what they do to it. Cause it's Curi a lot of curiosity, a yeah. <coughs> so let's talk about that just a little bit, being on the SMSU campus. Dan, you can speak to this. We're on the SMSU campus in a building that's still owned by SMSU. There's Correct. this big collaboration happening here where it's an SMSU mm -hmm. building that both us and the service cooperative are leasing, and then the ABE is even leasing space, and we'll talk about right. them in a minute. But we're, we're not really part of the college campus. Talk a little bit about that. Like There is a separation between our programming and theirs. Yeah, there, there is a, um, basically it's the control of the building is where that separation comes from. Um, basically, our kids aren't, um, don't have access to SMSU through the links, mainly to keep our, you know, the ELC and the ALC kids separate from the college students. Um, but they basically manage the building, the, the maintenance of the building itself, and then um, we control essentially the function of the building inside. Yep. Yep, and the kids don't have access to go back and forth. Nope. Like college kids, even though we had some things the first couple right. days, the other doors right. are shut and those doors are locked, yep. and there is no access back and forth between the Correct. two without going around outside. Yep. And Only yeah, outside. So secure, yep. safe building for all of our kids. You know, and we should mention just a little bit too. We talked about the ELC being downstairs. Um, for someone who's not sure what that means, the ELC is the Educational Learning Center, Correct. run by the Southwest Service Cooperative. That used to be the Bellevue Learning Center, so it happened yes. in Bellevue. They've moved their programming here. It's a program for students with behavioral needs from the entire region. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, just like how many students do we have at the ELC or at the ALC? ALC. Uh, currently, we have 34 in-person uh, students, and we also have our online program that has right now currently 13. Yeah. So running right around 50 kids, and that's yep. a pretty typical size for our program because um, we really focus on keeping those classes small, and we talk about meeting individual needs. That's how we do that, those, those small Correct. pieces. Yep. So, yeah. Um, thinking about the, um, so we talk, we've talked about the ALC and the CTI. We haven't really broken down what makes those different. <coughs> like, like for someone watching says, I don't, why do they open two new spots? <laughs> Well, as Brian said earlier, um, the ALC is really those core classes, the, your math, your reading, your social studies, where the CTI is the career and technical, the trades, um, the CNA certification. Um, so if a student wants to go to the CTI and get a welding certification through uh, the Lincoln Corporation, they'd be able to go there and take the welding course and then take the test at the end. 
And so the real difference is um, the CTI is all elective base type courses and it's more career driven. Mm -hmm. And so the whole, the whole idea is to hopefully those students will then reach out into that career, either welding, autos, um, CNA, nursing. And so again, at the CTI, it's more about that, I'm sorry, the ALC is more about that credit recovery, getting those core classes um, accomplished so they can meet graduation requirements. Sure, so a student could be at the high school and CTI, or yes. ALC and CTI, Correct. or high school and ALC. It could be a combination of of different things just depending on, on where they're at. That is correct, yep. So thinking... And I would add in, or ALC and online, yeah, that's or true. high school and online through the ALC. So a lot of flexibility yeah. there. There yeah. is. Yeah, so that's where those individual conversations with you, I know a student wants to enroll, they don't just walk in and enroll, there's a lot of conversation taking yeah, yeah. place, whether it be from the home district, whether it be the high school across the street or a high school down the road, and that conversation between you and the principal of whichever other location, right. the counselor's talking about where we at credit-wise, and yeah. really what plan do we put together, because every kid has an individualized plan to reach graduation. Yeah, that's They correct. know when they yeah. come, here's how many credits you have, here's how many you need, here's what we're going to do to get you there. Correct. Yeah. Um, so talk a little bit more about what, like if I'm taking a, a language arts class at the ALC, what makes that unique from a language arts class at the high school? Well, one, class size is much smaller. And um, it's more individualized, like we said earlier, where the teacher actually can um, go one-to-one -one with that student and actually hone in on the areas where they need the, the help with. And then basically coach them to be able to pass the class or pass the standards. So whereas in a high school setting, it's you got 30 kids in the classroom, yep. um, you know, teachers probably walking around more, not necessarily getting, you know, individually involved with that student to be able to figure out exactly what that student needs. Sure. So in some cases probably tapping into that student's strengths or interest right. areas uh, to, to use that interest area to try to address those state standards. Right. Uh, right. On an individual, that it can only happen on an individual right. basis. So yeah. that class size plays a big, big role in does, making yeah. that happen, and the staff has some little different training yeah. involved to yeah. Yeah. know how to work exactly. with students like that. And since some students that aren't ready for, aren't comfortable with the high school normal high school setting, there's a reason why that anxiety builds up, and so then we have to have those individual plans to be able to understand what excites the kid, what motivates the, the student to be able to um, achieve a passing grade in that class. Right, well, that's great. We provide some of the same wraparound services, uh, whether it be school access to school counselor, uh, access to greater Minnesota families, access to, uh, we work with Western uh, mental health and have a chemical dependency counselor for those students who maybe are struggling with with uh, some chemical use. So just trying to really provide a lot of uh, comprehensive services to help that student achieve academically to their right. fullest potential. I think a lot about those community resources like private industry council is yeah. another one that we work very yeah. closely with and getting kids connections <clears throat> or, you know, we have our work learn coordinator who does the work experience mm -hmm. with you with Shanda coming in and the connections with businesses, you know, might be working a job, it might be doing some internships or something. So a lot of the same right. things we do for like our students in our CEO program, but also providing some of those resources to our kids at the ALC and just yeah. a lot of times a, a 16, 17 year old doesn't know what they want to do after high school. So let's, <laughs> yeah. that's part of our job is let's figure out what some good fit things might be for you. So I know we're running low on time, so, on time, so before we're done, I just want to touch base on ABE as well. So adult basic ed, there's also some space within this new location for them. Yes. They have some offices, a couple classrooms. So just talk a little bit about what they do and how that's separate from what we do as well. Well, adult based education, uh, primarily what they're focused on is, well, GED. For those students that haven't achieved their diploma, come back later on as adults and and then try to achieve their GED. Some of them are also for uh, learning the English language, mm -hmm. so ELL is there as well. Um, so that's primarily what they do. Um, that's obviously different from us because we're still dealing with the high school age students, um, trying to get them to their diploma, but if they end up dropping out from us, the next step for them would probably be to go to ABE to, to get their GED done. Sure. So adult basic ed is 
they work within under the school umbrella, but they're not necessarily okay. part of the school. So that's one of those Correct. spots. You can't be ABE and high school. And we talk about those connections that happen. It's it's just a separate programming. There is this the space made sense. Mm -hmm. Some of the overall thematic ideas of what we do make sense, but it's a different clientele and maybe another another option for a student where, you know, I think you talk about the EL, sometimes we'll get a student that comes to Marshall and they don't get here until they're 18 years old, need yeah. an entire set of high school courses to graduate. Maybe a diploma won't happen for that student, but then let's get right. you some background information and then work with ABE to get you to a spot that you are ready for a future. Right. So, And also that adult who maybe moves to the Marshall community, and they might be, you know, 30 years old and haven't earned that mm -hmm. high school diploma and, and want to or need to. They see the benefit of having that uh, GED, the graduation equivalency diploma, to be able to open up career opportunities for them. And so, uh, and, and I think some of that... Uh, programming occurs, you know, we're pretty much restricted to eight to three. Right. Uh, yep. And so adult basic ed, uh, those, they work with folks as they're balancing a working yep. job often during the day and then maybe some classes at night or they work a second shift type job. And so adult basic ed can help them some during the day as well. So a little more flexibility for adults. Sure. <clears throat> well, guys, thank you for joining me today. Um, good information for our community. Um, community members, if you have any questions about our ALC programming or CTE programming, uh, you want to know more, check out our website, uh, marshall.k12.mn.us. You'll find a section about these, these programs specifically on there. You'll see Dan's email, Dan's phone number and stuff are all listed on there. Reach out and let us know what questions you have or call the high school and we yep. can connect you that way too and make those connections. So excited to have you guys here. Very excited about this new programming, this new location. Um, this is great for our students. It's great for our community. And um, just I enjoy talking about it. So thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you all for watching this month. We look forward to seeing you next month.